name's Joseph Smith. I'm here with Ken today. I'm Ken. I'm here to uh, talk about OCD. I, I suffer from that uh, OCD I have for years, and I uh, am willing to uh, share my story, uh, hoping that it will help. Uh, uh, so Ken, do you mind telling us maybe some stories or some incidences that you remember, uh, maybe even before you were formally diagnosed with OCD? Sure. My earliest uh, recollection uh, as a five or six year old, I had a, a special number. It was four. Um, there were four of us uh, left in my, our family after my father passed away. and. I, I did things uh, four, four times, uh, counted four times at that, um, and felt that if I did that, uh, we'd be protect, protected, the rest of us. Uh, if I didn't do it, something bad would happen. Uh, the next thing I remember is in uh, school, I was uh, sitting in class, and uh, I've, I've had this symmetry thing for evening touches out since I was six or seven and uh, I remember t um, touching my ear with my shoulder I um, apparently uh, I turned my head and my my one ear hit my collar and I felt like I had to even that out and I would I'd touch that and mm -hmm. um, so uh, a girl one time uh, sitting behind me said you know what are you doing I I hid or uh, you know tried to hide most of uh, uh, what I did. I had never heard of OCD, didn't know why I, I did the things I did, and, um, and actually until I was 35 years old, huh. I was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So something you said, Ken, was the number four, you would do things four times. Um, what was the significance behind that, and what would you do four times? Um, I would touch touch things four times. If, if I'm walking through a doorway and I, I hit my elbow on the door, I'd, I'd go back and uh, um, I'd touch it four times uh, on one side and then the other. I would uh, count to four and um, the, the reason was that uh, my, there were four of us left in our family and mm -hmm. I thought that uh, if I didn't didn't do that, that uh, something else would uh, uh, another family member would leave, and uh, so I, I felt compelled to uh, okay. to do it. So you lost a family member, and there was four people left. Yeah, in your my family. father passed away um, uh, when I was young, and there were, there were four of us left. There. So is number four? Is that still sticking with you today? Has anything changed with that? Uh, it has. Um, I my own family now. I have a, a wife, uh, two sons, and a a dog, and now five's a special number. So Ken, when thinking about your symptoms of OCD, what would you say are the most disabling or frustrating for you? Probably uh, through the years, I, I've had many uh, different rituals, and um, some I was either able to stop or, mm -hmm. or they just weren't uh, uh, important anymore, uh, but usually something took its place. Um, right, currently, I have a strong fear uh, that uh, someone, uh, a loved one, harm will come to a loved one. Uh, j just walking by my, my kid's room, uh, I th that thought pops in my head that, that something's going to happen to my car accident or, or something. I retrace my steps and, and say a, a prayer. And um, I, I do try to resist doing that from time to time. And mm -hmm. I feel so anxious uh, that I... I end up going back and doing it. Like I walk down the stairs and uh, say I'm not I'm not going to do it, and mm -hmm. I turn I I end up walking back up the stairs and uh, addressing it, and and uh, so now I usually give in to it right away because I know that uh, I usually end up having to go back mm -hmm. and and do it anyway. So even you try to push it away and not do the the ritual. Say a couple things uh, come up like obsessions and uh, I um, I try to just dismiss them and uh, I'll go on and continue doing something and and what usually happens is I'll end up going back and having to address everything I put off mm -hmm. you know that I try to let's go into something um, it's hard for you to get done something for you to get started because of your symptoms I have uh, uh, around uh, 
my home. Uh, many projects started mm -hmm. and not finished. For instance, um, just trying to get some painting done. Uh, I'll start spackling and taping the walls and they and sand them and they're never good enough for me to put a uh, paint on. Uh, my wife is many times saying just slap paint on it and I, I, I can't do it. It has to be perfect so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm spackling sand and spackling sand and, and um, uh, never getting it done. They never feel ready to paint to me mm -hmm. and uh, I act, even tried um, breaking the wall down into uh, several parts, uh, marking it off and, and trying to get a small section ready to paint mm -hmm. and uh, and then finish that and then move on and uh, but that that didn't work uh, um, it, it seemed like the I don't know for some reason the, the borders ran in each other and that, it just can you tell me a little bit about what you did for work um, earlier in life and has it or did it impact your work life sure um, I was a, a rural letter ca carrier for 20 years it did impact uh, my job. I, I would get back to the office late um, many times because uh, it would take me longer to, to deliver the mail. I would mm -hmm. um, deliver it to a mailbox and I would start out to the next box and uh, I would often back up and check uh, to make sure I didn't uh, make a mistake uh, in the previous box. So uh, mm -hmm. it took up a lot took more of the time, time than it should have taken. Correct. In regards to your symptoms, what are some of the things you do? You mentioned tapping. Can you just maybe show me some of them that you do? Or? Um, it's uh, one of them is uh, a, a, a symmetry thing, I, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, evening out um, sensations on uh, each side of my body. Um, e even just sitting here now, uh, I, I feel like I have to put equal pressure on different parts of my body uh, mm -hmm. on each side, and, and I'll. Um, touch if I'm bump into something with my elbow here I, I have a very strong urge to even that out mm -hmm. and um, and if I don't do it it just just doesn't feel right until I do is uh, the, the fear of harm coming to a loved one and I'll um, mm -hmm. I'll retrace my steps to the point where, where I I was when that thought came in my head and I mm -hmm. uh, I'll say a prayer and ritual and, and uh, address it. Another thing is uh, with uh, contamination, uh, although I, I never had the uh, the classic hand washing till the hands are raw, I did have, um, I, I do have some things uh, related to that. I'll, um, when I get something out of the refrigerator, and I open up a jar. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to envision anything bad, germs or anything bad jumping out of that before I close it up again and if I don't if I didn't do it satisfactorily I, I, I'd open it up again and, and do it till mm -hmm. I feel is like there a number it. there do you count the four or to count the five um, no not with that it's just uh, till um I, I, I actually try to picture something negative or bad mm -hmm. jumping <laughs> out of the container mm -hmm. and then it's quickly closing it up okay. now where your boss is or were they ever on your about things like this being late or taking longer to do things. Um, uh, somewhat. Um, I, I I never shared uh, <clears throat> the you know the reason why with them the OCD. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, they they would uh, occasionally um, you know tell me uh, you know you need to get back sooner or you're gonna miss the the pickup. First, or let's go back to. Um, I guess when you were formally diagnosed, how did it come to you seeing a physician or a doctor? Um, did someone recommend it, or did you go on your own? No, I was. Uh, it was shortly after I got married. It was acute panic that lasted for several weeks, actually. Um, and I felt like I I couldn't get enough. It was winter time, and I was congested, and I felt like I couldn't uh, get enough air, mm -hmm. and I I, I panicked. I was always bending over, trying to uh, get a deep breath. I could get a deep, satisfying breath. And for, for three or four weeks, uh, I was really bad, not sleeping. And 
my mother-in-law recommended seeing a, a friend of the family who was a doctor, a psychiatrist. That was the first uh, that I, I found out about uh, OCD. Uh, mm -hmm. Shortly after seeing her, she diagnosed me with that. And that was how many that, years uh, before you were suffering? That was in 1990, so that was uh, almost 30 years wow. after I uh, had like the had first symptoms. So after all those years before you've seen a, a doctor about this, did you have any wild guesses or did you assume what you had? I had, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, tried to hide it uh, for the most part, um, but my, my brothers uh, saw a lot of things I did, the rituals and stuff, and mm -hmm. um, used to tease me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and some friends too, they used to call me Habit Boy, and um, I, I didn't um, have any idea w mm -hmm. why I felt I had to do those things, and I n never had heard the term OCD. Mm -hmm. Was there any relief, or was there any satisfaction on your end? Or? I kind of think uh, it, it was nice to know, to put a, a name to it. Mm -hmm. So what, did, what specifically did it help you with? Did it help you knowing that you weren't the only person suffering with this? Or? It did. Um, I, I did feel... Um, Good knowing that it was something that there was some knowledge about. Um, mm -hmm. uh, although back then I don't think there was a, a whole lot. I was very interested in it too. I wanted to learn as much as I could about it. Um, even mm -hmm. even now, still uh, for myself in ho hopes that uh, I'll find something that will help and uh, also that uh, you know it could help someone else. So you have a wife and kids. Um when you first got married or first met your wife, how was she? Was she accepting of your symptoms? How was that for you guys? Um, I didn't talk to her about it. I was, I suppose, I was embarrassed. It wasn't until um, we, we even talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, prior to that, I didn't mention it to her at all. So now that your wife and yourself have, have spoke about this um, and your symptoms, is it helpful for you to have someone to be supportive and not be alone with this? Is she's been a tremendous help. My my uh, kids know about it. Um, uh, they used to wonder uh, why I would do some of the things I did, and um, I don't uh, I don't talk to my kids a whole lot about it. But uh, they're, um, they're they're pretty understanding. My my wife and I do talk about it uh, a lot, and she, it just makes me feel good that she she's there and under, is understanding. And you were telling me before about a time when you had blood drawn. Can you tell us about that? I just got done talking to the doctor about the symmetry and evening things out, and uh, I had blood drawn. And um, uh, they were unsuccessful on the one arm, and, they, and he put a Band-Aid on it, and he, and he drew blood from the other arm and put a Band-Aid on it. And then uh, when I went back in to see the doctor, um, I, I mentioned to him that, uh, you know, I didn't ask for that. That just happened. <laughs>